Right, let's look at question four. Question four has to do with sequences and series. So you're thinking arithmetic, geometric, quadratic. So there's a lot of things you have to be thinking here, but your formula sheet must be on hand because all of your formulas are there for you. Okay, so let's start by reading. The third term of a geometric series, you should be thinking ratio for that one, right? Is seven, and the sixth term is negative 2,401. Determine the first term, which is effectively A, and the common ratio, which is R. Firstly, go to your um, formula sheet and find the formula for a geometric series and write it over here. Well, not. So it'd be Tn equals A, R, N minus 1. Okay, so now we know that my third term, right, equals A, R to the 3 minus 1, and we know that that equals 7. Okay. We know that my sixth term, right, equals a r 6 minus 1. We know that that is what it equals, and we have that. Okay, 3 minus 1 over here is just 2. So we now have these two things. Okay, I'm going to say, well, I want to try to find my common ratio. So I'm going to say t6 over t3 equals negative 2, 4, 0, 1 over 7 okay so this is and I know that students often um, struggle with this a little bit because they they like oh how on earth am I supposed to do this right well what is a common ratio we know the common ratio has to do with division so here we're going to divide my t6 by my t3 and we're going to try and get the ratio by itself so over here I'm sorry for my messy handwriting but I said ar to the 5 over AR squared um, equals negative 2401 divided by 7. Put that into your little calculator, negative 2401 divided by 7. And that gives me negative 343. Okay, we know that my A's can cancel because there's one at the top, one at the bottom. My um, exponent laws tell me that this is R3 equals negative 343. Now, if I want to get R by itself, I'm just going to cube root it to both sides. Not a problem, I don't even need to check my answer. Just literally put it into my calculator. I say, okay, the cube root of negative 343. Oh, oh, that was a square root, you see, good. Can't have square roots of negative numbers. So that was a good little warning to me. So we know that my ratio equals negative seven. Perfect, so now we've got one of the things we needed to get. My use of space has not been particularly good, but I will do it over here. Okay, so now we have our ratio, no problem. Let's go and sub it back into here. So we know that seven equals a times by negative seven all squared, right? All I've done is I put my common ratio into my formula and now I'm gonna solve for a. So this becomes 49a equals seven. So a is just going to be one over seven. Right, and we have then found the two things that they asked us to our ratio and our a value. Okay, so please don't forget when you're finding a ratio, you should always be thinking about division. When you're finding a common difference, you should be thinking about subtraction. But here, you can still use your algebra and your normal, um, sort of basic bod mass rules and algebra rules to help you find your different values. Let's go into the next question. Next question, I'm not gonna lie, when I saw this for the first time, I was like, okay, this looks a little bit tricky, but it's not too bad. Okay, so it says, the diagram below shows a pattern that is being formed as it, as it progresses from figure one to figure four. Show that the number of circles in the pattern forms a quadratic circle. Sequence, right? So I think what's important here is don't try and look at like how the sequence is formed. What has it asked us to look for? The number of circles. So here we go from three circles to seven circles, to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 circles. Then we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Okay, so this is how our sequence is going. When it says quadratic, what are you thinking, right? You should be thinking, well, I have a constant second difference, OK? 
okay? You need to be thinking that that's a definition, right? You need to know your definitions in maths. There's an element of learning there. So this is four, this is eight, this is 12. That's our first difference. And then our difference between four and eight is, is four, and eight and 12 is four. And there's our second difference. So therefore we know, right? Therefore we know it's quadratic, right? Because of a constant, because this is a little mathematical sign meaning because, constant second difference. Okay, oh, sorry, I have been doing this whole thing without showing you, right? So you see here difference, well, how did I get the difference? Seven minus three, that gives me that. How did I get the second difference? Eight minus four gives me that, okay? Because there's a constant second difference, we know that it is quadratic, okay, by definition. So that's literally all they want you to show. You can get nice, easy four marks there, right? Let's go on to the next page and see what they require of us there. So the next page says, well, determine a formula for the nth term in the form of this quadratic. So we're still, we're still looking at this, this lovely little se uh, series here, this little sequence, right? So, so don't, don't be um, like perturbed by it. But let's see what we can do. So we've really got the first second and we've got the first sort of we've got all our terms, we've got the first difference and we've got our second difference. So that's fine for us now to then go and work out a quadratic. Now, there's an element of learning with a quadratic, right? And I'm going to write down a couple of um, formula for you um, just so that you know what I mean by this. Um, so you need to learn these, right? Um, and and there, there is obviously a, a way to explain these and um, I will I will post um, if you go look at some of my other videos I actually explain this quadratic sequence but you can just actually just Google just or even in YouTube type in how do you prove a quadratic sequence or um, find the general formula for quadratic sequence and it will show you where this comes from I just want to focus on the paper here um, so these are the three formula you need Okay, so you say 2a equals your first, your second difference, which in this case was 4. So then we know that a is going to equal 2. Because what are we solving for here, importantly? We're not solving for the n values, we're solving for a, b, and c. That's what we're solving for. Right, so we solve for a. Now, let's go here, 3a plus b equals our first difference. When I'm saying my first difference, what do I mean here? Well, when you're looking at these formulas, we're always looking at the first difference with regard to the first term, right? So my second difference here was 4, my first difference is also going to be 4, and my first term is going to be 3. So don't be using 8 as my first difference. It's my first difference between my second term and my first term. So just be careful there, because students sometimes get that mixed up. So over here, this would equal 4. We know what A equals, so sub that in. Right, now just solve for that. So B is going to be four minus six. So B is going to be negative two. Okay, so now we've got A and we've got B. We just have to find C. We know that A plus B plus C equals T1. A is two, B is negative two. And T1, what does T1 equal guys? It equals three. Go sub that in over here, make that three. And we can see that C equals 3, okay? But we're not done because it said, please write the formula. So we've found A, B, and C, but we haven't written the formula. The formula then becomes 2N squared minus 2N plus 3. Literally, all I've done is subbed in my A, B, and C values to get my formula. Okay, you can go check this by plugging in like T1 and etc. and just solving through, right? Um, but this is a pretty foolproof way of going about getting a quadratic sequence. Okay, so just be careful that you, you know these because these are not given on your formula sheet, so you need to know, right? Um, but once you know them, it's fairly easy to solve. Okay, as long as you know what I mean by the first difference, second difference, and T1. Right, let's move on to our next question.